All right, so this, this move is less about a pass and more about how to put pressure properly. And half guard is one of the only places that you can really put this deep, deep pressure. It's pretty difficult to do it from any other position with this shoulder pressure, okay? So when we're, when we're here like this, I saw a lot of good questions. One question uh, that someone had is how do you get past their knee? And I forgot to mention it. I actually, I'm posting on this knee here with my hand. And this is just so that he can't bring this knee up and out. If I don't do this, he can just bring this foot out sometimes and just bring it right back into guard like this. So I don't want that to happen. I can kind of sit on his leg like this, sitting on my own foot to kind of pinch it in place. That's one thing you can do here. The next thing I can do is put my hand right on the knee like that and pin it. However, you don't want to leave your elbow pointed out. It's very tempting to kind of like do something like this and like push it down, but that's just going to give him an opportunity to underhook me or grab my arm or kimura me or something. So keep your elbow tight. This hand is just temporary. It's just to hold his knee in place here for now. Now, as I get the knee open, another question someone had was, how do I pull their leg out of the way? And the answer is you don't. You're actually pushing his knee out of the way with your chest. This is just locking you to it. So this is just the tractor beam, and I'm pulling myself into position here to open his leg up with my body. See how my whole body opens the, his leg? My whole body is going to be a lot stronger than just my hand. A lot of times this won't be enough. You have to just use that to get your chest in position. And I like to lock this knee just right between my pec and my shoulder here. And you can kind of just sag that shoulder in front and open it up this way, like this. And then from here you can have, you have two options. You can go in front of the leg like this. So from here my shoulder's still blocking. So as he tries to pinch that knee back up, it doesn't actually work and I can snake my arm through. And the other option is just to straighten my arm up and over and then tuck it back in. So you have two routes to get to the false underhook. Then once I get it here like this, the reason we're doing the false underhook is because I can't get a true underhook here. We already talked about this. I can't get my arm through and this won't actually work because his elbow is tucked, right? But you still get the same type of control with this elbow grip. I can still move his whole body. I can pull him forward. I can push him away. And I can also push it up, which is really strong, this grip. He can tuck his elbow as tight as he wants. I'm going to be able to get that arm up. It's just a strong leverage position. So cupping people's elbows is a super strong temporary underhook. And while he's worried about this, as I try and get the underhook, that's when the shoulder pressure comes on, right? And the nice thing about this combo is that it doesn't matter if his arm's in the way or not. That's the real key. If I don't do this, and I'm not attacking his elbow, and I try and put shoulder pressure, I have no future here. I can't get deeper. He's going to block. I don't have an ability to get to an underhook. His elbow's under my chest, and I'm not able to secure my final position how I want. So it has to be this way. Here like this, and then... Because of this grip here like this, it lets me kind of open his arm up as well. He can tuck all he wants, but I have a surprising amount of control over his body and arm just by grabbing his elbow. We kind of, the same thing as like when we were doing that foot control like a week ago, same thing. You can get weird control with weird grip. So this one's really strong here. So this kind of lets me get, so if he's framing here with both hands, but I have his elbow, I can kind of move that one out of the way. And there's not, not, he's not gonna be able to stop me. And if it's just this hand in the way, when I do my deep back grip, I'm going around his body in a way that puts my pressure and pulls his hand out of the way of the frame. So if I just go directly, the frame is there. But because I have this grip and I go nice and deep and around, look how it just compresses his arm into his neck. So all I did was just pack more material between my shoulder and his neck, which is great. It just eliminates more space so I can get a super deep control or he has to pull his hand out, okay? So once we get this grip nice and deep, and look how I like extend my arm and then pull it nice and tight. I'm almost to his belt. I don't want to just bend my arm around his neck here and grab like this. Not nearly enough pressure. I'll actually straighten my arm and I'll slide it up and then grab super deep and lock that in place here. And look how low my chest is. You can see his elbow is up still. I don't, I don't let him get his elbow down like this. This cup here is what's really gonna let me open it up now. And I'm not using my arm, I'm not pushing but the position I got earlier comes back in handy now because now I just drive forward and the elbow comes up. So I'm just walking my hips forward and I'm kind of sprawling on him. I don't have the same shoulder pressure, but I do have the opportunity to connect my butterfly grip. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like right here. So once I put the pressure, I get the arm up here like this. I maybe have his back flat on the mat, but look, I'm gonna lift his back up. So I just kind of retreat a little bit. So his back lifts up. And my target here is an X right across the center of his back. This is my target zone. And I'm going to bring one hand underneath. And I'm going to put the other hand over. I'm going to put a butterfly grip 
right in the center of his back. Not up high like this on the shoulder, but directly between his shoulder blades is where I want that X. And I want to get that super deep here. And I go butterfly grip like this, and now I start to pressure in. And from here, his shoulder's still off the mat, and I'm gonna spare Austin here, so I'm not gonna squeeze super tight, but to really make this position strong, my goal is to drive forward enough so that this shoulder touches the mat here. So then what ends up happening is his whole back is off the ground, and it's just being suspended by my wrists, and I drive him up and over like this. And what's really nice about this control is it doesn't matter what he does with his legs at this point, I'm secured chest to chest. He's not gonna get out of the position. So I'll show you an example of this. So if I'm here and I get this grip like this and Austin goes to butterfly guard, puts me in butterfly guard here and starts to elevate me like this. He could try and he can even put his feet on my hips if he wanted here. He can try all he wants, but as long as I'm here, it doesn't matter if I'm in his guard, past his guard, I'm locked in. We're in for the ride at this point. And no matter what he does, I can just move my hips, walk one way or the other, and just keep the pressure. It kind of takes the thinking out of the game because the position's so tight. And we're just looking to continue to pressure until we have an opportunity to knee cut across, knee cut to mount like this, or even use like a windshield wipe position to open up his legs to clear. So we're gonna do all that work just to get to this super butterfly grip where we have this intense pressure. And it's because because of how my wrists are stacked, you can see that's probably like five inches of ground clearance, and it's a pointy thing that I put right in the center of his back, and then I drive his back up and over it, so it's just pressuring down directly on him, and it makes you like it makes him do this, right? And then he's not able to bridge and he's not able to turn, so that's really what we're looking for. It's a lot of little details, but if you can master these, you can put a ton of pressure here, pressuring in. and then drive my head down as well. And then I get up third point pressure and I'm looking to bring the knee across or across. So you can hold onto my leg all he wants. With a tight half guard, it doesn't really matter. As long as I get up to my toes, watch what happens to my knee. It's just gonna slide out. And now it's free to go left or right. Left or right. Either way will lead to a pass. And it's a nice way to pass because you don't have to worry about him scrambling at the last second because he's totally pinned. We did all the passing work early so that when it's time for him to actually start fighting, it's too late. He's just totally controlled. Okay, any questions? So let's get that butterfly grip like this. This is the key. Okay, so you curl your wrist. My wrists are turned. I'm not just doing this. This does not work. You're not palm to palm. Not enough pressure. Wrist to wrist and let those hands lock over your forearms and squeeze super tight and pinch your elbows. Okay, any questions? Let's try it, one, two, three.